The game of a thousand stories. Star Wars The Old Republic launched eight years ago. That fact alone might make some dismiss it as old news. But I don't think the world has yet come to appreciate quite how significant this behemoth of a game is. Seriously, at this point it's such a huge game, I find it difficult to get my head around it. Back in 2012 it received a Guinness World Record for being the largest entertainment voiceover project ever due to its recorded dialogue in excess of 200,000 lines. Hold it! You have no idea what you're dealing with. Well, since then, the game has received a handful of expansions and its size is mind-boggling. If we're talking sheer quantity, The Old Republic is indomitable. Let's see. The game is based around non-linear, choice-driven story content, which means even if you played them all, you'd never see all that there is to see in the eight different classes with unique storylines, each of which is basically the size of its own game. And that's not even taking into account the side quests and expansion stories, which usually play differently depending on whether you're on the side of the Republic or the Sith Empire. Of course, quantity has no relation to quality, but so many of these stories are really rather good, intricate and surprising and grand and interesting. If you've ever read a Star Wars novel, it's like being inside one of them. Or rather, 50 of them. There are so many characters, including a plethora of companion characters who each have their own arcs and relationships. You always put the Republic first. I hated you for that. Beyond that, this is an MMO with tons of planets, solo space adventures, multiplayer space battles, group flashpoints and operations, PvP arenas, achievements out the wazoo, and don't even get me started on the pets, mounts and costumes. That's not to mention player housing, guild fleet ships, crafting with a passive crew mission gathering system, all kinds of discoverable easter eggs, and I'm sure I've missed something. And that's all inside this very Star Wars-y production, with top John Williams music mixed in with excellent original score that goes a step above imitation. The game is ridiculous. Years later, I still regularly have moments of surprise. And what I like about its size is that now it's so big that I don't feel OCD, like I need to achieve every single thing and fill every single progress bar. I know that it's just impossible and I'll never get there, so instead I can relax and just do the activities I feel like doing. I think this feeds into the friendly atmosphere of the game. It's a community of players who are happy to just help each other out. Honestly, I attack enemy players whenever the opportunity arises, like any good online player should, and it was incredibly nice of this lot to leave me alone after they realised they could gank me forever at this spawn point. That's a friendly community. Something's wrong. The Imperial and Republic fleets aren't attacking each other. So, hey, the Old Republic is definitely not as flashy or visually fancy as the new Jedi Fallen Order or Battlefront, but it is much more rich in features and systems. And I'd say that... By not always being a visual masterpiece, on some level you're invited to suspend your disbelief more just to appreciate these stories. Again, it's like being inside Star Wars novels, and you'll get more out of it if your imagination's there to fill the gaps. Don't be so quick to condemn the Empire. Now, I said it's not very visually flashy, but it certainly has a beauty of its own. As you can see, this is far from ugly. Okay, but what's really unique about this game, why I'm prompted to make a video like this, is its ability to tell serialised stories over such an extended period of time. And by time, I mean both game time and real world time. It is a profound experience to see the same characters with the same excellent voice acting over so many years of stories. It's like a really long running TV series, able to do callbacks to things that happened eight literal real world years ago for some players, or several hundred hours earlier in game time. There are few experiences in popular entertainment that can do this. There's an intense nostalgia to jumping back on my Imperial agent I made in 2011. I've had eight years with this character, throughout which he has been through a series of fantastic Star Wars stories. At this point I feel extremely attached to the character, who's voiced by this guy. He's dangerous. There are things you should know. You would like to see Her Majesty endowed with superhuman powers. That's actor Bertie Carvel, and his dry, wry British deliveries are so much fun. What kind of supplies are you expecting? NRO2, did you set up this speech to the troops on Viking Space Dock? King Petrif sent me to rescue you all. You can lower your weapons. Savik has done an excellent job. Her plan was well conceived and flawlessly executed. 
Seeing close companions come and go as the years go by can be heartbreaking and uplifting. Vector. It is good to hear your song again, Agent. You have no idea how happy I am to see you alive. I didn't know if I'd ever see you again. There's so much I want to say to you. And that, this Imperial Agent, is just one of the playable characters. There are 16 actors fully voicing the playable characters throughout all of the Old Republic. The fact they replicate all this voice work across male and female options for each class and in French and German as well is wild. If anything, the Old Republic is too big for its own good. It aims high and often misses the mark, so there's a lot that's very easy to criticise. It can be pretty buggy. I suppose. There's supposedly a pretty crazy party happening up in the officer's lounge. It's full of, frankly, silly animations. The client can feel a little clunky and drop some frames no matter what kind of system you're running. And there are a bunch of loading screens. And sometimes there are these fades to black when you're traveling between areas which can punch your immersion right in the noggin. The gear progression and various leveling bars can feel very treadmill-ish. Also, there are a lot of microtransactions and loot boxes in the game, and I think that's all really dumb, but I'm not gonna get mad about it. And of course, there are some plodding, dull fetch quests, like any game, like any MMO, which is why you've got to enjoy the stylings if you're to appreciate this game. The world, the creatures, the lore. You've obviously got to like Star Wars. Also, man oh man, the latency in Australia is bad. It is such a tragedy that the Old Republic's Australian servers were removed a few years back. They were just so good and... Oh, I don't know, just tragic. Basically, the Old Republic is a game that often feels like it has been restricted by the technology and its development resources. But again, that's because it's so huge. This is still the game with so much potential. The latest expansion, Onslaught, launched just last week and it's pretty good. Adds some story and some fairly neat updates, but it doesn't feel very significant. Hopefully there are more updates on the way without too much delay. In future, I'd like to see them optimize the client a bit, speed things up a little and, and go over some old content to ensure the game's entire immense offering remains relevant for current players. There's so much great stuff there that should continue to be polished, I think, rather than just giving players level boosts to skip to the new expansion. Make everything matter. I'd also like to see a bit more respect paid to the MMO side of things. This game has some beautiful big planets where you can run around with loads of other players, but for a while the main new content has been single player focused story content. I love MMOs because they're filled with other people and I'd love to see the developers use that to their advantage a little more. Going through a Star Wars story in a group with your friends is such a unique experience and that's what this game should really be leaning towards more than it is. Star Wars The Old Republic is a game with many shortcomings and a lot of thus far wasted or untapped potential. It's disappointing that it doesn't feel quite like a really polished open world next gen MMO, but it's worth appreciating the game's many successes. Its ambition is enormous. This is a game that feels like it was supposed to set the world on fire, and even if it hasn't quite done that, the fact it aimed that high, and the strong smell of blood in the work, defines it permanently for me as an intriguing piece of art. There is little I appreciate more than ambition, and here lies a picture of ambition. <laughs>